Welcome back Commodore fans. In today's video, I'll put two basic compilers to the test and see how much they can really speed up your programs. As you might be able to guess, I'm going to be using a program that sorts the Petsky character set in screen memory, which is what you're looking at right now. If you'd like to skip directly to the speed test of the compiled programs, there's an index in the description below. The first compiler is Basic64 by Abacus Software. This is the compiler I actually bought and paid for back in the 80s. The second one is the Sprint compiler, which was first published in the January 1986 issue of Compute's Gazette. There was an upgraded version of Sprint in 1988, but for today I'll stick with the original. First let's take a quick look at the basic program I'll be compiling. It's called simply QSortB. Let's load it and take a look. Here's the full listing. I've also included a link in the description to a D64 image file if you want to download it and experiment with it yourself. Lines 1 through 70 is where we initialize the screen and variables. Let's ignore the strange rim statement at line 1 for right now. I'll come back to that later on. In line 10 we set the variable SM to the start of screen memory and the variable n to the number of items to be sorted. Line 20 clears the screen and positions the cursor. Line 30 is where numbers from data statements are read and poked directly to screen memory. Lines 40 through 60 print a message and wait for the user to press the spacebar to start. And in line 70 we reset ti string to 0 so we can time the process. Lines 100 through 220 are the quicksort routine. I'm not going to analyze how the quicksort algorithm works. That's an entirely different topic. Anyway, here is the generic basic routine for the quicksort algorithm. I found this routine in either a book or magazine a long time ago, so I take neither the credit nor the blame for its efficiency. As you can see, I've adapted it to peek and poke directly to and from screen memory rather than sorting a traditional array of items. And finally, lines 240 to 260 print a finished message and display the elapsed time. The rest of the program is the data which consists of the numbers 0 through 255 which I've randomized. This data set will be used for all examples to maintain consistency. Okay, so that's the basic program we'll be compiling. I'll start with the Abacus Basic 64 compiler, so let's get it loaded. At the main menu you have a choice of two compiler options. Optimizer 1 is the default setting and is fully compatible with the BASIC interpreter. Optimizer 2 is also fully compatible with BASIC, except that all variables will be converted to integers unless otherwise specified. The advanced development package contains compiler options that can be set by the user. I'll come back to that in just a minute. The overlay feature is used to compile a number of successive programs which can share the same set of variables. So I guess if you're creating an office or accounting suite, this is what you'd use. I won't be using this today though. Okay, let's start compiling the program. First let's go into the Advanced Development menu, where the first setting is the type of code to be generated. Your choices are P-Code, which is the default, 6502 and 6510 compatible machine language, or nothing. I'll start with the default P-Code setting. The only other thing I will change here is the top of memory address. The default is for the compiler to use all of the available memory. I always like to change this to 49152. This will instruct the compiler to leave that 4K area starting at 49152 free. So you can still use it for machine language routines or data. It's not really necessary for this program, but why alter my practices now? And for the rest of the settings, we'll just keep the defaults. So we return back to the main menu, select Optimizer 1, and type in the name of the program. Basic64 reads and compiles the program on the floppy disk, and the process can take a long time depending on the size of the file. It's a two-pass compiler, and when finished it displays the addresses used by the program. OK, the program compiled successfully, so let's go back to the main menu, select the Advanced Development Package, 
and view the directory listing. The compiled program was named p-qsort.b and it takes up 28 blocks of disk space, whereas the original BASIC program only takes 7. So while BASIC 64 is still loaded, I'm going to continue compiling with different options. But first I'll rename p-qsort.b to 1p.qsort so that we don't have a file exist error later on. For the next version, I'll compile it with Optimizer 2. This option will treat all variables as integers by default. And this is where that strange rem statement comes into play. BASIC64 uses rem statements to issue what it calls compiler directives. The at r directive tells the compiler that the following variables will be defined as floating point. The z variable is used to calculate the elapsed time in seconds and is the only variable that I want to be defined as floating point. So now you know what that weird rem statement is doing. All right, back to the advanced development package. This version will still use P code, and I'll set the top of memory to 49152, same as before. Then we return to the main menu, select Optimizer 2, type in the name of the program, and off we go. Okay, we're finished. Let's look at the directory again and see that we have a new file that is the same size as the first one, but the important difference is that this version uses all integers. Let's rename this file to 2p.qsort and continue on. For the final version, I'll use the 6502-6510 option for the code generator, and again set the top of memory to 49152. Returning back to the main menu, select Optimizer 2, type in the program name, and off we go again. With that finished, let's look at the directory again. And now we have a file called m-qsort.b, and it takes up 31 blocks. Let's go ahead and rename this file to 2m.qsort. And with that, we're finished with the BASIC64 compiler. Next up will be the Sprint compiler. Unlike the BASIC64 compiler, Sprint is not fully compatible with the BASIC interpreter and has quite a few limitations that make it really difficult to write any big or complex program. Here are the major limitations. 1. Sprint is integer only and only integers in the range negative 32768 to positive 32767. However, the peak, poke, and sys commands will accept a larger number. 2. Only supports a subset of basic statements. Since it's integer only, the statements dealing with floating point operations are the ones excluded. 3. There is no operator preference when evaluating numerical expressions, and parentheses are not recognized. This can be very frustrating, and it's what we'll have to change in the QSort program. 4. No string arrays. Only one-dimensional numeric arrays in the range 0 through 127. And 5. String variables are limited to 10 characters unless you dimension them first. Even with the limitations, you can still create small, fast utility programs and demos such as our QSort program. I've duplicated the QSort.b file and named it QSort.s. This will be the file that we use with the Sprint compiler. So let's load it and take a look. Most of the program will be okay. We just need to change a few lines that contain numeric expressions. For example, here at line 130 in the basic program, there is a numerical expression to calculate the offset of the data set. Sprint can't process the expressions unless we break it into single steps. Here's our original basic line. And here is the Sprint equivalent, where we start from the innermost parentheses and work our way out to finally arrive at the desired offset into the data set, represented here by the variable D. Lines 135 and 145 have also been added to calculate the offset before peaking the item for comparison. The only other problem here is that Sprint doesn't support the TI string system variable. However, it won't see line 70 as an error, so we'll leave it as is. 
and line 240 will just be rimmed out. So to time this, I'll have to use a stopwatch and paste in the results afterwards. And that's all I need to make it compatible with Sprint. So let's load the Sprint compiler from disk. When loaded, you type sys32768 to start it. There is no fancy menu or options to set. Just type in the name of the program and off it goes. It displays the BASIC program as it reads it from disk and assembles it into memory at the start of BASIC. Any errors will show up in the list. OK, it's now finished with no errors, so let's list it. As you can see, Sprint creates a BASIC stub with just a sys command to start the program. But first, let's save it to disk. And it saves just like a regular BASIC program. We'll call it qsort.spr. And now when we check the directory, we see that it's only 14 blocks. Not bad at all compared to BASIC 64. OK, we're done compiling. Let's run the BASIC and compiled versions of QSORT and see how fast they are. First, we'll start with just the BASIC program. I'll fast forward while sorting here so we don't have to wait too long. You can see by the flow of the character pattern how the quicksort algorithm is dividing the data set into partitions as it sorts. And we're finished. The basic version took 45.45 seconds. Next up is 1p.qsort, the basic 64 default P code version. This will be run in real time. Done! 13.68 seconds. That's three times faster than the basic version. That's a pretty good start. Let's move on to 2p.qsort. This is the basic 64 P code integer version. Five point zero one seconds. That's nine times faster than the original. Definitely an improvement over basic. Next up is 2m.qsort. This is the basic 64 machine language integer version. Wow, 1.53 seconds. That's 30 times faster than the original. I definitely got my money's worth with the Abacus compiler. And finally, the Sprint version from Computes Gazette magazine. And holy crap, 1.42 seconds. That beats the commercial compiler by a tenth of a second. Pretty good for a type-in program from a magazine. So is it really worth it to compile your basic programs? I say yes, it definitely is worth it. As I said before, there is a link in the description where you can download the QSORT files used here today. You can try it out with your favorite compiler and see how it stacks up. Let me know if you can beat 1.42 seconds without changing the code or the data set. And if you have a more efficient QuickSort algorithm, I would really love to see it. So leave me a comment or even a link to a more efficient basic routine. One final thought about sorting on the Commodore 64. Compute Magazine published a sort routine called Lightning Sort in the September 1984 issue. It is a machine language routine that can be used with basic string arrays, and it is the fastest sort routine I have ever seen for a Commodore computer. Check it out if you're interested. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and be careful out there.